everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a spiral rope bracelet today. Really, really easy. I know I say that about all of them, but it is. <laughs> I've got my 11 galvanized silver Miyuki seed beads that I use a lot. I've got some 8 Miyuki Duracoat Opaque Crocus. It's a purple color. I have some three millimeter purple colored fire polish beads here. Um, I happen to have two strands of these and I don't know how many it's going to need it. There's 50 on a strand and it might take more than 50. I'm not sure how many it's going to take. Uh, and I don't have these labeled. I got a bunch of fire polish beads from when I was subscribed to the dollar bead box and I just, I don't know why I didn't label them, I just threw them all together so I don't know what it's called but it's a purple color. I've got a little magnetic clasp here, a couple of wire guards and a couple of jump rings. I've got two size 11 tulip beading needles. I'm only going to use one but I always have an extra in case I drop one. I have my 8 pound fire line and smoke. I have my chain nose pliers and my bent chain nose pliers that I'm going to use to put my clasp on at the end and I use the chain nose pliers to fat, flatten the thread so I can get it through the needle uh, and of course I have my scissors to cut my fire line and like I've said before you probably want to have a cheap pair of scissors to cut your fire line because it will dull your scissors I think that's everything hold on I'll get some of this poured out and I'll be back okay I've got some of my beads poured out here and I'm going to start and the main challenge I'm going to have with this is holding it where you can see what I'm doing. Because usually when I do this stitch, I cup it in my hand. And of course, if I cup it in my hand, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> this is not going to be the kind of stitch that I can put a crochet needle up through and a uh, crochet hook up through and hold it so you can see. So I don't know. I've been trying to experiment and figure out a way to hold it so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to give it a shot here. I'm going to pick up four 8-0's. This is going to be the core. I, I didn't have one to show you an example of, but this is going to be the core. I'm going to have a core that goes down the whole bracelet, and these are going to be my core beads. And I'm going to pull them all the way down here to my stop bead, and I've left about a 10-inch tail because I'm going to come back and sew a clasp on when I'm done. Now I'm going to pick up <coughs> Two 11 O's, two of my silver 11 O's, <clears throat> one of my three, miller fire, three millimeter fire polish, and two more 11 O's. So that's what I got. Yeah, that's what I got. Now I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and go back up all four of these beads. <clears throat> and pull them through and that makes a little little loop on the, to the side of my 8-0's there. Now this time I'm going to pick up another core bead which is my 8-0. I'm going to drop it down to the rest of my 8-0's here. Now I'm going to pick up two more 11-0's and three millimeter fire polish and two more 11 O's. Now I'm always going to go, be going through four beads because I started with four beads. I'm always going to be going through four beads. So I'm going to go down here and count down four including the one I just added and I'm going to go up through the four 8 O's. Like that. And I'm going to pull my thread through. Now every loop that I make from now on, this one included, I want to make sure that I push to one side or the other. It doesn't matter which. If you want to push it, I always push mine to the right. But if you want to push yours to the left, that's fine. You just need to do that every time you put a loop on in order to get your spiral right. So I'm going to be pushing all of them when I pull them through here I'm going to be pushing them all over to the right like this so now I'm going to pick up another 8-0 another core bead 
drop it down to the rest of my eight Now I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, a 3 millimeter fire polish, and two 11 O's. I'm going to count down four, including the one I just put on, and I'm going to go through all four of those beads. Pull my thread through. Make sure that stays over to the right of my eight-o's. See, I usually cup it in my hand like this and hold, hold the loops back. But that's what you want there. You want it going a little spiral like that. So I'm going to cup it right now because it's more helpful to me and I've already showed you a few times so you probably have got what I'm doing. I'm going to pick up another core bead which is my 8 I'm going to pick another one that one looks skinny. Pick up a core bead which is my 8 Drop it down to the work. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. A three millimeter fire polish and two 11 O's. I'm going to count down four, counting the one I just put on, and I'm going to go through all four of those beads. Pull my thread through, and I'm going to make sure to push my little loop that I've made here to the right. So now that's what you've got. So I'm going to pick up another core bead, an 8 drop it down to the, my, all the, my other 8 O's, pick up two 11 O's, and 3 millimeter fire polish, and two 11 O's. I'm going to count down four, counting the one I just put on, and I'm going to go through all four of those beads. I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to make sure my loop lands to the right here, and then I'm just going to push it back there to keep it on the I'm going to push it back there to keep it on the right side. So that's what you've got now. Now, uh, if I were to put it down and come back and try to figure out which of these loops was my last one, it will be the tallest one here, the one, the one coming out of your very last 8 So that's how you would know how to get back to back to the order that you are doing them in. Oh, hold on just a second. I'll be right back. I'm back. Sorry about that. I was just, these springtime allergies are getting to me and I was about to cough and I didn't want to have a coughing fit right here. <laughs> hey, Y'all have to hear me have a coughing fit. Now I'm going to pick up another core bead, which is my 8 Drop it down to my other 8 O's. Pick up two 11 O's. A three millimeter and two 11 O's. I'll count down four of my 8 and then go up those four 8 O's. And push my little loop I just made over to the right. Now, when you get to doing this, you can once you get used to doing it, you can pick up your core bead. Go ahead and pick up your two 11 O's. 
and your 3 millimeter fire polish and your 211 O's. Drop them all down at once. And now just go down there and find your fourth 8 0 and go up through all four 8 0s. And make sure your little loop goes to the right, your little loop that you're making goes to the right there. And that's what you've got. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more and then I'll leave you alone. I'm gonna pick up one 8 0, two 11 0s of fire polish, and two 11 0s. My two 11 O's fell off my needle, my last two. I'm going to drop that all down to the work. I'm going to find my fourth 8 O down and go up through all four 8 O's. Pull my thread through. And make sure my loop falls to the right there. Now of course as you go these are going to spiral around the core but you just want to make sure keep making sure that you're pulling them or pushing them over to the same side either the left or the right doesn't matter. Now you can do this core you don't have to use 8-0's you can use something else you just want to make sure it's a big enough bead or it's a bead that has a big enough hole because you're going to be going through these several times. I've only ever used an 8 0, but uh, you probably could use a 6 0. It would just make for a bigger, you know, a little bit fatter bracelet. Uh, you might could use an 11 0 Delica because they are, they have bigger holes than a regular 11 0 seed bead, but I've never tried it with an 11 0 Delica. I don't know that I could get back through there very well. So I've only ever used 8 0s. You don't have to start out with four. You can start out with three. You can start out with five, whatever you want to do. Uh, you just, if you start out with three, you'll be going through three core beads every time. If you start out with five, you'll be going through five core beads every time, but it works the same. You don't have to use what I'm using for your little loops here on the side. You can use, uh, I have used a four millimeter in the middle instead of a three millimeter. You could use three seed beads and a three millimeter and three seed beads or three seed beads and a four millimeter and three seed beads. You could use bicones, rounds, whatever you want to here. I've never seen it done with anything bigger than a four millimeter. Uh, you don't have to use anything. You could use an 8 out for your middle bead. You don't even have to use a middle bead. You can do it all in seed beads. If you want to just do a, you know, five or six seed beads, uh, you can do different colors of your 11 O's if you want to do like say a silver and a purple and a big bead and then a purple and a silver on this side you if you do that you would just want to make sure you put the same beads on this side as you do this side uh, you can do whatever you want if you if you use more beads than this it's just going to make a bigger it's going to make a little bit more a little bit fuller bracelet Plus the uh, what I'm using here, the two 11 O's and the three millimeter fire polish and the two 11 O's, they're a little bit shorter than what four 8 O's are, so that's causing my core to spiral as I go. It's going to spiral around there as I go. If you use say three 11 O's and a three millimeter and three 11 O's, that would be probably about the same as these 411 O's so your core part wouldn't spiral it would probably be just be straight and of course if you use even more than that it would be straight so but you can do there's just a whole lot of different things you can do with this so you don't have to do, use what I'm doing or do it the way I'm doing it it'll just get a little you'll get a different look you can make a double spiral which I do have an example of here this is a double spiral that I have and if I can ever figure out how to hold it where you can see what I'm doing I'm 
<laughs> I might make these one day if y'all want me to. Make one of these one day if y'all want me to. But this, what we're doing today, is just a single spiral. And that's all you do until you get your length. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep doing this until I probably will have to add thread. And I'll come back and show you how I add thread. So I'll be back. Okay, this is what I've got so far. And I'm going to add thread. So I'm coming out this end, this 11 over here at the end. I'm going to sew back down through this last loop I added. These two 8 O's, this fire I mean these two 11 O's, this fire polish, and these two 11 O's. And I know that looks loose, but it's going to tighten up here in a minute. I'm going to go go back in that bead that my loop is coming out of there. And I'm going to go down. And now I'm going to I'm going to sew some half hitch knots in in between my core beads. I don't want to sew them in in these last beads because I'm going to have to go back through them some more. So I'm going to make sure I get down here away from those top ones. And then I'm just going to go under here and find my thread bridge. And then go up through my loop. Slowly bring my knot down in between those two eightos there. Now I'm going to go down a few more of my core beads. Be careful not to get hooked around your loop like I just did. And then I'm just going to Find the thread bridge in between these beads. And go through my loop. Slowly pull my knot down. Now I'm going to go through a few more of my core beads. Find the thread bridge between these two beads. There's one in there. I promise there is. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now I'm going to go up through my loop. Slowly pull my knot down. Now I'm going to sew through a few more of my core beads to get away from my knot. And then I'm going to cut off. Now I've got another thread here already threaded, a needle already threaded, and I'm leaving just about six inches of tail, just enough to sew in. And I know a lot of times I go ahead and leave my old thread attached so that I know where to come out, but I know I need to be coming out this very last 8 here. So I'm just going to go way back down here, away from my top that I want where I want to come out and start my needle end up in my core here and I'll pull my thread through until my stop bead stops it and now I'm gonna go ahead and and I probably should have been always telling you to do this I'm gonna go ahead and tie a half hitch knot here and a few times before I get up to where I want to come out because if I don't it's possible that if I just continue on with my stitch it could pull this you know, the stop bead could pull through and come out, and we don't want that. So I'm going to find my thread bridging under here. Between these two beads. I'm 
No, I thought I had it there. I'm getting all the way under the bead instead of hooking the thread bridge is what I'm doing. Which is not what I want to do. Okay, we'll go up through another couple beads and see if there's a, a thread bridge up here that, that wants to be have a half hitch knot tied in it. This one does not does not seem to want to do that. These beads are full of thread and it's kind of tied in there so it's a little bit hard to get through there but Now I'm going to grab a thread bridge here. I'm going to go up through my knot, or my loop. Pull my thread down slowly. Okay, well, that's in there pretty good now. So now I'm just going to sew all the way up through until I'm coming out that last 8-0. And I, you just have to, you want to look and see where your tallest loop is, the one that's coming out this last dado, and that's where you know you are. So when I do this next loop, I pick up an 8-0, two 11-0s, a fire polish bead, and two 11-0s. Drop that off down here to my work. And so this... Just find the tallest loop, the one that's coming out that 8 and that's the one I want to hold back. And then I'm going to go down here and count down four 8 and go through all four of them. And make sure my loop goes to the right there. Like that. So now I'm just going to continue on with my stitch. And then uh, I'll, I'll take this off and sew this in just like I did the thread that I ran out on. And then I'll come back and we'll uh, attach the wire guardian. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got the length that I want now. And I know this doesn't look like much more than it did when I added the thread, but <laughs> I was almost done when I added that thread. And I probably had enough that I could have gotten through it without having to add thread, but I wanted to show you how I add thread. I usually start these bracelets, I usually start anything with about six feet of thread, and it's always usually enough for a bracelet like this. Of course, you can do this as a whole necklace. You know, I've made lots of necklaces with this stitch. It makes a pretty necklace. Oh, and uh, this is about six inches, and it took about 70 of my, it took 70 of my three millimeter fire polish beads. So, now I'm just going to add my wire guardian. So I'm gonna take my wire guardian, go up through the through one channel, and then I'm gonna go down through the other channel. And I'm gonna go back into my core. I'm gonna pinch the wire guardian so that the Thread comes down in that channel. If you don't want to go straight into your wire guardian, if you want to add a few seed beads and then your wire guardian, that's fine. I just, I'm using this magnetic clasp, so it's not going to, you know, if I was using a toggle, I would want to make sure that the toggle bar had enough room to go through the loop. But since I'm using this magnetic clasp, it's going to be fine. So now I'm going to. I'm coming out this fourth 8 and that's where my last loop started. So I'm going to go back up through my loop here. And 
Then I'm going to go back into my wire guardian. Back down my wire guardian, back through my 8-0s. Come out that fourth one again, and I'm going to go back up through my loop. Again, same loop. And I'm going to go back up my wire guardian and back down one more time. Back down into my core. And now I'm just going to go down through my core here and tie three half hitch knots like I did when I ended that thread. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then I'll come back and we'll put on the clasp. Okay, I've got both my uh, wire guardians on each end here and I'm just going to add my clasp. I'm just going to take a six millimeter jump ring here. I just always keep these magnetic clasps together when I put them on. I don't know why, I just do. There we go, a little spiral bracelet. So let me get some of my beads cleaned up here and I'll be back. So there it is, a little spiral rope bracelet. Like I said, you can go on and on and make an entire necklace out of it. I've made a lot of necklaces and you can vary up the, the way you do your loops and whatever you use for your core beads. It's, it's a really versatile stitch. You can make a lot of pretty, pretty things with it. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook and Instagram and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Thank you.